Who are you people? It's us. From ten years ago. Welcome to Film Riot. Today, we're going to do things a little bit differently than we normally do. We don't have a question and answer today. Today is a tutorial, but a tutorial done in a much different way than we usually do them. This is going to be a much deeper dive into how this was created and looking at the software the entire time, screen capture of the software as we go through doing it step by step. And of course, since this is so new, we want to hear what you guys think. So after the episode, leave your comment in the notes below. Let us know if you want us to do this more. This wouldn't be Thursday episodes. This would only be on Mondays that we would do every now and again. So let us know what you think. But today, the tutorial that we are looking at is how to do title cards in the style from the trailer for us, which is Jordan Peele's new film. So now we're going to show you that and then get right into the tutorial. Logo. We're going to show three different title plates. This, this, and finally this. So to start, let's create a new comp. Ours is 1920 by 1080, and it's 23.976 frames per second, and we'll call this title one. So we're gonna go to layer, new solid, and create a white background. We'll call it BG. Now we're gonna create a new solid called ink and change the color to black. Use the pen tool to draw a random shape. Doesn't really matter what shape, you can change it later if you want to. Now go to effects, distort, turbulent displacement. Boost the amount slightly, then dial the complexity up high, like between eight or nine will probably do. Press F on your keyboard to show the mask feather settings and boost the feathering. We went to about 44. Press M on your keyboard to show the mask path and set a keyframe with the stopwatch. Then you're gonna click the mask drop down and set a keyframe and the mask expansion and turn down the value. Also scale down the mask shape until you can't see any of the black shape anymore. Then you're gonna move forward in the timeline and boost the expansion value. 50 looks good to us. Now scale up the mask shape. Highlight these two new keyframes and press F9 on your keyboard to set them to easy ease to make the animation slow down over time. Now, if you play through, it should look like the ink is bleeding through the paper or cloth. But now you can bring those two keyframes back in time if you want it to spread faster. Now to create a bit more of a gradient to the bleed, look for the effect called inner outer key and apply it to the ink layer, but place it above the turbulent displacement effect. Change the foreground to none, then boost the edge thin to around 2.7 and the edge feather to around 64. This adds a bit of a gradual bleed around the edges of the shape. Now above the ink layer, go to layer, new adjustment layer, and we'll call it mirror. Search for mirror in the effects and presets and drag over the mirror effect under the distort heading. Right now it looks like nothing's happening, but if you drag this little circle at the far right to the center or type in 960 in the horizontal window to get it exact, and you could see it mirroring the ink layer below. Now remember the ink mask shape is fully adjustable. So we now can tweak this until we find a design we really like. Just remember to adjust the mask keyframes if needed. You can also change the layer rotation to get a different pattern as well. And you can also change settings in the turbulent displacement. Like here, this looks a bit like a skull. Now go to effects, blur and sharpen and add sharpen effect to boost it to around 90. And now we'll play through and it should look something like this. We'll want our text to show up in the middle, so we will need it to be solid black there to make the text readable. So let's duplicate the ink layer and get rid of the mask path keyframes. We'll also delete some of the points in the mask shape to make it more basic, and we'll tweak the shape to make it more solid. You might need to change the turbulent displacement settings and the mask shape more, and you can hide the first ink layer to make it easier to see what's going on with this new ink layer too. Move the layer forward in time and adjust the mask expansion keyframes so that it's spread slightly later and faster. You also might need to change the first expansion keyframe until the ink isn't visible. We're now gonna turn the ink layer back on, and if it looks like there's now enough black in the center, we can move on to the text. With the text tool, draw a shape or click in the comp and type out a line. We'll just go with our enemies. The font we're using is Adobe Garamond Pro, which looks kind of similar to the text in the Us trailer, and we have italics switched on. With the anchor point tool, you can move the anchor point to the center of the text, then move the text to the middle of the screen. You can also use a grid overlay if you want to further line up the text right dead center and you could use a rectangle tool to draw a rectangle
angle around the text, getting it close to the top and bottom, then boost the mask feather until it looks like there's a gradient on the top and bottom of the text. Now we're gonna scrub through the timeline to check if the text is legible enough and adjust your ink mask and layers until you're happy with the speed and look. To match the background of the official titles, we're gonna use this free stock image we found on pexels.com. You can see the name of the creator on the screen right now. Also, we'll have a link for that in the notes below. The material at the top with some effect will look similar to the official title. So drag and drop this on top of the comp, then change the anchor point or position to line up the top of the image to the comp. We'll call this layer BG texture, then go to effects, blur and sharpen, fast box blur, and then boost the blur radius to around 18, then go to effects, color correction, tint to make it black and white. Then effects, color correction, and curves. We're gonna tweak the shadows and highlights to make the texture look a bit flatter. We're gonna set the layer blending mode to multiply so that we can see the layers below. And above this texture layer, we're gonna create a new adjustment layer and call it grade. We're gonna search for a LUT effect. So there are multiples that you can use, but we're gonna apply color LUT to make it easy. Then we're gonna throw on the Indiana Jones LUT, which is from a pack that we sell, which is Try and Color Cinematic LUTs you can get that at tryandstore.com, link for that in the notes below as well. But then we're gonna add a curves effect above this and then tweak the brightness and colors to more closely match the official titles. Finally, we're gonna create a new adjustment layer and search for the transform effect. We're gonna drop that onto the adjustment layer, scroll forward to the beginning of the timeline and set a keyframe for the effect scale. We're gonna move forward in the timeline now and boost the scale and hit F9 on your keyboard again to easy ease the keyframe. And now we have a slow push in throughout the shot which means that this version one is done. Now we're gonna duplicate the title one comp and double click to open it. And we're gonna scroll down and delete the two solid ink layers. We're gonna use this ink stock footage from this pack on videohive.net. They've got some great bleeds similar to the ones in the official trailer. So we'll drag and drop it below the mirror adjustment layer. Now it's all about changing the ink position and rotation until we find something we like. For scale, if you click this chain icon, it unlocks the scale constraint proportions, which means you can change the value of X and Y individually. You can type in minus 100 to flip the layer again, giving different designs with the mirror effect. So we're just going to keep moving things around until we have something that we really like. Once that's done, we need to brighten up the ink footage a bit to hide these dark edges. So we're going to apply a levels effect and boost the brightness until we can't see the edges anymore. Now we're going to use another clip, which will be some stock footage that we filmed ourselves. It's this blood stock footage, which we have put up for you to download for free. You can find a link for that in the notes below. These can also be used as ink. So we're gonna use Blood 4, drop it in above the ink footage and set the blending mode to multiply. Once again, we're gonna alter the scale position and rotation to get a design we like. Now we're gonna add the tint effect to make it black and white and then a levels effect to crush the black levels and tweak the highlights until it's a solid black behind the text. You might need to reposition again like we did. In the official titles, they used a lot of random blots dotted around the frame at different times. So we're gonna use some more ink stock. We're gonna drop it above the other stock at a slightly later point in the timeline and once again set the layer blending mode to multiply and change position rotation and scale we'll copy and paste the levels effect from the first ink stock to again get rid of the dark edges of the stock footage this one has some splashes that we don't want so we're going to roto around just the main ink drop and feather the mask we can also change the speed from 100 to 50 to make it twice as fast just to add more motion we'll duplicate it a few more times and again change position rotation scale and where it starts in the timeline. You could just keep doing this until you have a unique and interesting pattern. One thing that a lot of the official title cards have are a couple of blood drops which aren't mirrored. So we're gonna use Film Riot Blood 3, place it below the grade layer, scale it down, and set the blending mode to multiply. We're gonna tweak the scale more in position somewhere that works and move the layer forward in the timeline so that the blood appears later. We have a few clips of solid drops like these, but we'll go for Film Riot Blood 1 because it it bleeds out. We're gonna do the same, placing it below the grade and setting it to multiply and change the scale and position. Of course, we're putting this on the top right, but it's completely up to you where you put it in your project. We're gonna move it forward in the timeline again, just a bit later than the other blood to have some separation. And now you should have something that looks like this. But that's basically it for matching the official titles. But one extra thing you can do is select the mirror layer 
all of the stock footage layers and the background solid, go to layer precompose, and we'll just call this title to ink and press okay. Now select the text and go to effects, distort, displacement map, and choose title to ink precomp as the displacement map layer. You can see if I just boost this to show the text is being displaced by the ink stock. You don't want it too strong though, so we'll stick with five in both the horizontal and vertical displacement. So if you play through, you should have a little displacement like a ripple. It helps combine the layers more with a subtle interaction. We created multiple designs like these for different plates, and you can get some really interesting designs just by changing the position, scale, and rotation of the different ink stock layers. For this final title plate version, let's again duplicate the previous comp and double click to open it. We're gonna delete the text layer and turn off the ink pre-comp layers visibility. We are going to create some faces like in the final official title here. So let's jump into Photoshop. We're gonna click create new and ours is set to 2000 pixels by 2000 pixels with a white background and we're gonna click create. Now we're gonna be painting onto this white background layer. So we're gonna choose a paintbrush tool and our paint colors are going to be black and white with it set to black for now. We're gonna go up to the paintbrush presets and go to wet media brushes. We'll be using this one, Kyle's Real Oils 01. Turn the wetness down to about 50-ish and increase the brush size to around 150. Now we're gonna paint an outline of the face and here you see that Thompson is doing it freehand but you could use a reference if you want to just trace it. It doesn't have to be perfect though. Now we're gonna paint to fill it in because we are painting onto the white background layer with a wet brush. It kind of mixes and smudges the black and white together. So for more of a solid paint, you can lower the wetness amount if you want. So we turn the wetness down to zero for this part. And once it's pretty much filled, turn up the wetness a bit again and work on the edges until we have something that looks like this. Now swap the paint color from black to white and we're just going to work around the edges to try and get a smudgy paint effect. We're gonna boost the wetness up even higher for more effect here. Of course, this can be done to your liking. We're just gonna keep doing this until we have something that we like the look of. And we're gonna keep swapping between between black and white. If you want for certain areas, remember the higher the wet percentage, the more the colors will mix, which can give some cool effects. So there's also this drop down of mixer brush combinations here that have different looks. So try those out for different styles and different brush sizes too. Once you're happy with that, click this icon to create a new layer and go back to the paint brush presets. We're gonna go into special effects brushes and choose this one, Kyle Splatter Brushes, Splatter Bot Tilt. With this brush color set to black, we're gonna start painting around the right side to create some paint splatters. We're doing this on a new layer in case we decide not to want the splatters. We'll have some big splatters here first and then lower the brush size a bit for the rest. The brush changes up randomly each time that we click, which is great for splatters so we don't get any repetition. But it also means that you might get some clicks with splatter patterns that you don't like. So we undo any that we don't like the look of and then click again. When you've got enough black, change the paint color to white to do the same thing. The white splatters give you sort of an inverted splatter look as if you were using an alpha mat. You don't need too much, just stop when it looks good to you. So once you're done with that, we're going to save it as a JPEG. We made multiple versions when testing and each have a different style and you'll need two for the titles unless you use both for the left and right. But now back in After Effects, you can also delete the two bloodstock layers. We have our faces imported, so we're gonna drag and drop one for the left side and set the blending mode to multiply. We're gonna scale it down and move it into position like this. Then we're gonna drag and drop another face over the right side and once again set it to multiply and scale it down. To flip it, click on the constraint proportions chain and put a minus in front of the horizontal number. Then move it into position. Select both face layers and drag them down to just above the ink pre-comp. Then above the ink, create a new white solid so that it is below the two face layers. Then select both faces and the new solid and pre-comp them. We'll call this faces. Turn the ink layer visibility back on and turn off the faces visibility. Set the track mat to Luma inverted so that the ink is only visible within the faces. Move forward a bit through the timeline and scale up the ink pre-comp until the ink is filling the faces like this. Now you should have something where it looks like the ink is creating the faces. Above the background layer with the text tool, draw a box in the center and type out your title. We don't have the official font, but one which gives a similar vibe is called Alex Brush. We needed to change the text vertical scale, but you might not have to depending on your settings. Next, we're gonna 
going to change the color to a dark red to match the official title and make the text bold. And now we're going to make the second line bigger. But again, this is just a personal choice and it depends on what your text says and how you want it to look. Then we'll create a new solid above the text and apply the fractal noise effect. We're going to set this layer to Luma Matte, and this is going to add a faint texture to the title. In the fractal noise effect, alter the contrast and brightness levels. Under the transform tab, we're going to scale down the noise to make the texture more fine. And now we're going to alter the brightness and contrast levels further to make the texture more subtle. We do just want a hint of it to make the title feel a bit degraded. Something like this works well. For the title reveal, we're gonna use Film Riot Blood 4, which has a nice spread from the center outward. We're gonna drop that above the fractal noise solid and we'll scale it down just slightly. We're gonna apply a tint effect to make it black and white and then add a levels effect to crush the blacks. We're gonna pre-compose it and then we're gonna call it title reveal matte. Then we're gonna to click to move all attributes into a new composition. And now we can hide this layer's visibility. Click on the text layer and then search for the set matte effect. Drop it onto the text and choose the title reveal reveal matte precomp as the layer for the matte. Change it from alpha channel to luminance and click invert matte. Now the title is being revealed by the bloodstock, but you can see it looks pretty quick. So open up the title reveal precomp and we're gonna change the speed of the clip to 200 to make it half the speed. We're gonna make sure to click twice on the layers frame interpolation and turn on frame blending for the comp. Now we're gonna keyframe it to scale up over time as well. And that all looks good. Now you can see that this title transition looks a lot smoother. You can do the same as we did before and add a displacement map effect to the text. You can choose title reveal comp as the displacement map, but you won't need the values very high. Even that looks a bit too strong. So we'll have it really subtle right about there. And that looks great. Lastly, the official title has these paint streaks here and we can make these with our blood stock, meaning they will actually have motion on them as well. So open the face comp and we'll first use the Film Riot blood stock six, drop it below the faces layer, change the scale and rotation, then place it up here. We'll copy the mirror effect layer from the other title comp and paste it below the faces. If you paste it above, it will mirror the faces too, which we don't want, but it does have a cool look. And it's just about changing the scale position and rotation until we have a similar shape. Then add tint and levels effects again to make them match the faces. And next we're gonna drop in Film Riot Bloodstock 7, doing the same with this one too until it's something like this. Then copy the effects from the other layer to make this black too. Lastly, we're gonna duplicate Blood 6 and bring it to the top of the comp. Set the layer to multiply, then scale, rotate, and position it until it lines up with the bottom of the face like this. And now it looks like the face painting is leaking just slightly. Now we're gonna jump back into the other comp and with every everything in, it looks like this. So there you have it, three different styles of the Us trailer titles. And remember, a link for the free blood stock pack is in the description below. Domain.com is all your website needs, including .com and .net domain names and intuitive website builders so you can start creating an identity online. Of course, they're affordable, reliable, and have the tools you need to build a new website to start sharing your ideas with the world on a professional website. No domain extensions are going to help you tell your story like a .com or .net domain name. And if you want to brand yourself online, Domain.com has over 300 domain name extensions to fit your needs from .club to .space. Of course, they want to give you 15% off their already affordable prices when you get domain names, web hosting, and email. Just use the coupon code FILMRIOT at domain.com's checkout. And when you think domain names, think domain.com. Logo. And that's it for today, which means it's time for my suggestion of the week. And this one is Hearts of Darkness, which is a documentary on the making of Apocalypse Now, which is really a crazy story. It's a great documentary. I remember first seeing it in film school, saw it a few years after that, and was just reminded recently after re-watching The Godfather for like the 25th time and talking about the stories that I've heard from behind that one. It's hard to find, but you can rent it on YouTube, I found, and you can buy a Blu-ray on Amazon. But the trailer and links for all of that in the notes below. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat. Mm -hmm.